SanDisk UHS-2 Extreme Pro cards. Super fast, super reliable. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Oh, definitely a card nobody should be recommending. And of course, I'm going to be comparing that to the Pro Grades because the Pro Grade might be the card for you. Definitely for me, but for you too. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we're talking about the Sandus Extreme Pro UHS-2 card. 300 megabytes on the read, 260 on the right. Super fast, super quick, super, super, super on everything. At least we thought. The idea here is very simple. Reliability. Is this card reliable? And there's the definitions of reliable. What does reliable mean to you? Depending on your workflow, depending on what you do with your camera, this may be super reliable, maybe not. Now, from a perspective of the SanDisk and the company and how they create their cards, it's reliable. And you're not going to get file corruptions and all that kind of headaches that come along with uh, different SD cards. However, your workflow and what you do with the camera does change, especially if you're using different types of higher end cameras like the R6 or the R5 that has the potential to shoot 20 frames per second and fill that buffer super fast. And then we need to empty that buffer. So if you do have this card, uh, just make sure you review all the stats so you know the limitations. If you don't have this card, make sure you watch the stats so you can put into perspective of what card you should be buying and how you should be thinking about it upgradability-wise down the road. Now, my, my big pet peeve right now, and I, I think the big aspect of this, uh, the findings of this card, I, th there's no, if you've been watching me for a while, there's, there's no surprise here. I'm very disappointed in SanDisk, and this disappointment is huge. Uh, the fact that they produce a super fast card at the price point this is at is just, this, disappointing is just an easy word for it. It's much, much worse. The idea that the, the price point on this on 128 gigabytes is so high and the fact that they're bringing out another SanDisk card at 256 gigabytes, which I'm assuming that they haven't fixed the issues with this, is where you sit there and you go, what's the point with this company anymore? They were bought out and they have proven to go to the uh, to, to the mindset of the new big company and they're dealing with the problems the way the big companies deal with it. Hey, we'll RMA it. This is the second card I purchased to make sure that what I was finding was legit. Now, the other side is, should I be disappointed at the pesky creators who recommend something like this without testing it? who go blindly, you know, and I, can I be really disappointed? They go blindly because, like me, I, I bought SanDisk because I've been using them for such a long time, the reliability has been there. And the aspect here that I'm going to uh, entertain is the fact that this isn't reliable because when you get into an R6 or an R5 camera, this, this disc is, is, is useless because that buffer empties at a snail pace compared to other cards. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be comparing it with this ProGrade card right here. This is the UHS-2, super fast, 300 megabytes on the read, and of course, uh, 250 on the right, 10 megabytes slower than this. They're advertised in a way that they're comparable. However, the limitations of this card makes it not even worth it. So that is the goal of this video. So you are aware of this, not to bash the company, but to hopefully one day uh, people will watch this enough and, you know, they'll make the right purchases. Maybe one day Sandus makes a comeback and maybe you can share this with people so they don't miss out on that. Now, I am comparing the CF Express cards as well. So do hit subscribe so you can watch those. I did end up switching to Angelbird. I am not going to be using the Sand the Sandus CF Express card. I did find some issues with that as well. And that's where the disappointment comes with. Now, to start, uh, before I show you the stats, I'm going to do a quick test here to show you on a mechanical shutter with the R6. You start to hold down the button. It starts to fill up the buffer, transferring to the card. And then when you let go, it's still trying to empty this buffer. So in this case, with the mechanical shutter, you're sitting there going, well, Nico, that really isn't uh, such a big deal. Now, if I switch over to electronic mode, however, where we're getting more like 17 images per second, and I'll let that focus there. And now you don't hear anything. This will just fly and it starts to load up. Now, when this finally hits its number, you see it chugging along. And if I let go, now this is gonna take some time for it to literally um, empty. And this is the scenario that we're looking at. I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting. I wanna use this again, but I'm still waiting. Now, can I use it? Yes, but I'm not gonna get the uh, full 
width of the buffer and the, the super uh, set of shots that I need, say at a wedding or something like this. So the idea overall, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, what is the requirements for reliability? I need to be able to use my camera. And if this buffer is taking too long to load up, well, now we got a situation. And this is where the disappointment comes into play. So let's jump into the stats so we can review and see what the limitations are of this card. Now, the first slide we're gonna be looking at is the transfer of video. And you might be asking, why am I looking at video and separating this? In the previous video that I made about the SanDisk, I did find an issue with the transfer speeds with images. So I'm gonna recap a few of those. I'll leave the link again below for that video. Now, the idea here is because I found that issue, I wanted to dig deeper to see what's actually happening. On the read on videos, it's pretty good, 295. So this is transferring to the computer. You do a shoot, you transfer it over, it's 295. Transferring back on, it's around 243 megabytes per second, which is great. We need a V90 card, we're getting a V90 card. That's what this is telling us, especially for the idea of what we need for video and the higher codecs and the bit rates with the R6 and the R5. When we're looking at images being transferred over, we see this big dip of 73 megabytes per second. Now, this was on average, and this is what I found last time. And the question becomes, well, why? Why is this happening? And if we put these together, you can see that this should be an equivalent ratio. It is not. And, uh, you know, or close to it, I would say. Like, even if this was 150, I'd be like, okay, with the card. Um, but it's like 73. It's sad. So looking at the transfer rates of the video, it's uh, good at 245 megabytes per second. So I did this test several times, and I just took an image uh, at the beginning of this. But uh, And then I stopped the test. Uh, this is what you will always see. It, it's just MP4 is being transferred over. A good speed to have there. Uh, the idea of the raw images, this is at 83.2 megabytes per second. Now, uh, if you recall the previous slide, uh, we had 73 megabytes per second on average. So the question then becomes, well, the raws are going at 83.2 megabytes per second. Not quite the V90 uh, kind of card, but I mean, this is images, it's not video. So uh, that's you know where we're looking at it. But again, this should be much higher. When we're looking at it in terms of JPEGs, this is where the head is coming. It is JPEGs, 41.3 megabytes per second. And this is where that average comes into play. Now, when you look at all these dips that are happening in all these images, so going back to the video one here, this is the file changing over. So the file is stopping and then starting again. Uh, and, and it's just sequential going to the next one. So what is actually happening there? Every design of any kind of hard drive, any kind of uh, SD cards, they're designed to move different size files and uh, the different types of sequential and random, and you'll see all these uh, numbers. And that is just the block sizes uh, moving over the data. And the smaller you get, the uh, harder it is for that start stop to be happening. So it delays it. And that's all based on the design and the buffer and all that. So um, the idea here is that it's just simply too small. We went and tested more uh, situations. Now, this is a comparison of the 300 megabytes per second UHS-2 card of Sandus with the 175. So this is the UHS-2 is the, the V90 versus the V30 here. And this is on the R6. So this is the buffer being filled. It takes about five seconds for the UHS-2 card to fill with 87.6 images compared to the 80 images with the 4.63 seconds. Now, I don't know how to say this in a nice way. That should not be happening, period. This should have been tested by Sandus before being released. This should be something that's been tested by all those awesome creators who are recommending this card. Now, this is unacceptable to me, unacceptable. On, on a design of such a card, it's unacceptable. When we look at it in terms of just going to the ProGrade, which again, the ProGrade card is a slower card. It's 250 me megabytes per second. It's it just fills up in 5.73 seconds with 98.6 images. So you're looking at it and saying, all right, this is both you know the idea of raw images only, and you're looking at a second plus like you know very you know it's negligible, but it's a second, and you're seeing almost 20 photos more where the the Sandus does not perform. And you would expect something similar to this and you're you're not getting that. And that is where you look at the type of cards you're buying and this, uh, you know, if anything, that should be telling you, ding, ding, there's an issue. Now, these are the prograids that I am using. These are the, um, if it focuses, these are the 300 megabytes on the read and 250 on the right. They're UHS-2 cards, V90 cards. I'll be making more videos on that. I do have another one on that, like below again. So the idea then just becomes, well, what what is the next idea of what we should be looking at for the 
Canon R users. Now, I have a Canon R, a great camera. A lot of people have it. And a lot of people have uh, opted to keep the uh, the UHS-1 V30 card because the at the end of the day, it's good enough. But if you are shooting in certain scenarios like, you know, that 4K, having a, you know, V60 is what you need. Um, you need to look at the bit rate, but you need a V60 at least, but you, you, you get by, it still works. Um, now the, the idea here is prograde raw recovery takes 8.272 seconds where the Sandus takes 11.79 seconds. Now you might say this isn't a lot, Nico. Well, it's, you know, it's a lot depending on the situation. So if you're just in the studio taking some pictures, it won't matter. But if you're in a wedding scenario, you're waiting, you're waiting. So you're going to miss that moment. That moment will come and you'll regret it. And it will happen at that 11 second mark. And you're going to be like, ah. Oh. And yes, when you look at the idea of the raw and JPEG, you know, it's only a second different where you get a whopping almost like, what, four seconds here or three seconds here uh, different. So uh, it, it, it's, it's huge. And if you compare the two cards, like that, that five seconds here, it's it's massive. And of course, this is just showing you why, um, you know, if somebody says, well, you know, the you're transferring from a computer over to your your uh, SD card, well, you're not going to get the same thing as a camera. Well, I'm seeing it right here. This is the idea here. OK, this is the difference of the JPEGs being transferred over. And then the idea of this recovery taking so much more time. When we're comparing the sand disk within the recovery of the R6, you're seeing a C raw numbers of 23.174 seconds. It just astonishingly bad. If this doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what will. Well, I guess the next couple of slides. 24.7 on the raw and then raw and JPEG all the way up to 27 seconds. So this is what I was explaining before. We're holding down the camera, it fills up, and then we wait for it to empty the buffer and it takes that long. Let's look at the 175 megabytes per second, and it's almost like it's performing even better. So you, you got to look at this and say, man, what, what is occurring here? Now, 22.11 seconds, man, it's still high. But this is expected from a UHS-1 card. It is expected. When we look at the 300 megabytes per second from the ProGrade, look at these numbers. Six seconds on the C-RAW, 6.71 on the RAW, 9.44 again night and day let me show it to you once more look at the difference in these numbers 27 seconds which card would you rather have in a winning situation which one you tell me in the comments below because i'm telling you if you answer anything but the prograde here um we're we're having a long discussion about logic that's what's going to happen now dual card recording on the r6 well, where, what's going to take the hit? Well, of course, if you're using a Sandus, and, and this comes to the point where I was making before, if you do have one of these cards, you need to know its limitations. And if you go buy another ProGrade, it's not going to mean anything in this situation. If I'm telling you right now, look at the numbers, and you go, man, i got to get a ProGrade. It's not going to matter if you're going to use two of these cards because it's going to go back to that bottleneck situation where it's still recording to that sand disk. So in, in, in reality, you, you can't use this card. I'll be using it for backup and I go get something like ProGrades or other cards that you would test and make sure that it's working. So this is dual, 7.6 seconds for two ProGrade cards, where if you put a ProGrade in and a, a sand disk, this is on raw images only, 23 seconds. Look at the difference. This is massive. When we're looking at a raw and JPEG, massive. Imagine that. Now, you're telling me all these creators haven't noticed this? What kind of stuff are they shooting? I don't know. Okay, but this is where I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, well, the SanDisk is just not what it's meant to be, especially in these higher-end cameras. So significantly different. In the R5, I did the same test. You can see these uh, the, the seconds are increased here, 11.33, uh, where it was 7.6 in the R6. And that just makes sense. It's, uh, they're, they're, they're bigger files. So uh, because they're bigger files, they're you're going to see a little bit of an increase. But again, you're seeing the increases. And uh, it, it's just it's astonishing when you're comparing the um, the amount that you're seeing here. It's just it's just beyond me. And if, if this isn't telling you anything, I don't know what will. So now you tell me, which card would you buy? Honestly, which card would you buy? The idea here is price point. The price point is too high for this card for something that, for me, in most scenarios, in that run and gun shoot is worthless. If you're sitting in your studio taking pictures, this is fine. So if you don't want to stress these out and you have one of these still, then, you know, just 
that's fine. Keep it in your camera when you're using it in a studio. But when you go out and you need something super fast, super quick, you go for the, something like the Prograde. Now, there are other cards in the market. I haven't tested all of them. This is just one of the cards that I picked up because it was in a good deal. And I ended up buying like six of them because I need it for my workflow. I need to have that redundancy. I shoot with two cards. And this is why I bought the R6. So I could shoot the two cards. And then I was using the Sandus. And I'm like, why so slow? What's the point of buying that card if I could have just used my UHS-1? You know, like, well, for video, you need a V90 card. So, okay, with the R6 and the R5s. But, I mean, if I'm just taking pictures, do I really need it? No. I'm proving it to you. Now, on a V90 perspective, the card works great. Yes, it's going to be good. It's, it's, it's no issues. But on the images, you're buying a camera that you need faster capabilities in order to meet the demands of the camera. So you're going to be limited on the card? Come on, Sandus, come on. And, all, and, and, and it does come down, I, 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 I'm so disappointed. And I wanted to make this video in such a way so you guys are aware that we need to start testing things more. We need to be more aware of our purchases. We need to make sure that we don't rely on people that may or may not be testing. I've had people reach out to me that, can you test this hard drive? I saw the way that you made your hard drive videos and we want to you know, test our hard drive. We'll pay you 300 bucks. I could have taken that offer, but I sit there and I go, well, how is that going to, how's, what's the point? To recommend what? They're like honest review. I was going to eliminate the, the drive capabilities. I, I know it. I was going to ruin that guy's like whole hard drive career. There's no way I could say something nice. Yet, I know that people will be in that situation. They'll take the money and then they'll do a review and they'll be all in the positive. Just look at the R5C or when the R5 came out and all the, oh my God, and then all of a sudden, oh, it overheats. And then the R5C comes out and look at the, 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 the fanboys. You look at the fanboys and then you look at the people that are like, oh, they crippled the camera again. And then you look at the people that are cinema people and they're like, oh my God, this is the greatest camera ever. And you're like, are you serious right now? I got another video coming for that. That's going to be a rant. So, the, you know, I, I look at it and I, I can't not agree with some of these top YouTubers. I can't. And I can't agree with some of these people that are doing reviews on this stuff and acting like they have tested it when I know they haven't. Um, and it breaks my heart when I see people spend their money. I'm returning mine. I've, I've tested it. I'm returning it. It's going back. I'm done with SanDisk, I think. We're... Our relationship is terminated until further notice. I need to see some improvement on stuff. I won't be buying the 256 gigabytes to test it. There is no point. It is just, um, for lack of better words, disappointing to the degree where I cannot find, I can't justify even spending any more time on it. Um, the idea of whether you are in conclusion here, the R, if you have the R, you're not going to see the significant issue with it because the, the buffer doesn't fill up. So if, you, if you're on a consumer uh, device that is like on a high end on that buffer requirements, then you will see issues. But if you're not, then you won't. So that five frames per second that is filling up in an R, you'll be fine. You're not going to notice that big difference. You saw that in the stats. But when you jump up to the next level, well, now you're going to be looking at it saying, I shouldn't have bought that card. And this is why this is a critical video. So you know not to buy something that's going to be an issue down the road because these cards will stand the time. That's the thing. They will work for a long period of time, and you'll probably upgrade to an R6 or R5 or equivalent in other companies. And, and, and this is the, the bottom line. I, I don't want you guys to be disappointed, and I don't want to make a video saying, hey, it's all good. It's not. This is not, this is not good practice by any company, and we're seeing this idea of because of how YouTube has, and other platforms have structured this idea of reviews, what we're noticing is this level of mediocrity just keeps rising. And we're okay to deliver crap products like this and be like, hey, we're so good because people are reviewing them and calling them great when they're not. Anyways, I'm out. Leave your questions, comments below. But it's your experience, Ben. And am, am I on the right logical path here or am I off? Because I'd like to start up a discussion like that. Um, I, I feel like uh, sometimes I make these videos and I'm in over my head sometimes. But uh, also watch these two videos.